Adhesives, diseases. Listen up, it's the Sarge. That low-life maggot worm-hooded Cobra Commander is doing a big review of Sergeant Slaughter. If that disease worm is going to review the Sarge, he had better slaughterize it. I'll be back at the end of this video to see if that maggot worm disease reviewer slaughterized it. Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. This is the show where we review every vintage G.I. Joe toy from 1982 to 1994. This is it! It's the first video of the year and it's a super review of all versions of Sergeant Slaughter in the vintage line. We will look at all the figures, all the vehicles, and even some extras. Now, join me for a super review of all things Sergeant Slaughter. HCC 788 presents Sergeant Slaughter. Sergeant Slaughter was a professional wrestling character played by Robert Remus. Remus started wrestling in the early 1970s. He worked as a masked character called Super Destroyer Mark II in the American Wrestling Association. By the time he joined the World Wrestling Federation in 1980, he had established his Sergeant Slaughter persona. He was famous for his hold called the Cobra Clutch. He would offer wrestlers $5,000 to attempt to break the hold. In early 1986, the fictional Sergeant Slaughter character became part of G.I. Joe. Slaughter's inclusion in the toy line opened a dispute between him and WWF head Vince McMahon. There were four versions of Sergeant Slaughter released in the vintage G.I. Joe toy line. Version 1 was released in 1986 as a mail-away exclusive offer. Version 2 was released later in 1986 as the driver of the Triple T tank. Version 3 was released in 1988 as the driver of the Warthog AIFV. Version 4 was released in 1989 as part of the Slaughter's Marauders subteam. The acquisition of Sergeant Slaughter as a G.I. Joe character followed the failed attempt to add Sylvester Stallone's fictional Rocky character to the line. Slaughter may have been Hasbro's second choice, but his military theme is a much better fit than Rocky would have been. I asked Ron Rudat if he had any memories of the development of the Sergeant Slaughter action figures. He says he remembers Sergeant Slaughter showing up at Hasbro headquarters in a camouflage Cadillac. Ron was given WWF promotional photos of the Sarge in his wrestling uniform. Those photos were used to design the figure. Ron drew a color illustration, then did the sculpture sheet. After the two-up sculpture was done, Ron hand-painted it and it was sent to Asia for manufacturing. During the time Sergeant Slaughter was associated with G.I. Joe, he appeared in comic books, cartoons, TV commercials, and numerous licensed products. He was a popular character within the G.I. Joe brand, and he seemed to relish his association with Joe. After his run with G.I. Joe ended, he returned to World Wrestling Entertainment, formerly WWF. His return sparked some controversy. Instead of a hyper-patriotic, all-American character, he was cast as an Iraqi sympathizer at a time when the United States was at war with Iraq. The change made Sergeant Slaughter an effective villain, but it was a wild departure from his portrayal in G.I. Joe. Version 1 was released in early 1986 from Hasbro Direct kids could collect five special certificates and send them off to receive a Sergeant Slaughter figure through the mail. This version had a uniform that looked similar to Sergeant Slaughter's wrestling uniform. The mail-away Sergeant Slaughter figure came in a sealed plastic bag with the file card and his baton accessory. There are some examples of the sealed Sergeant Slaughter with a catalog inserted along with the file card, and others don't have that. I have to assume the examples with the catalog are early examples, and this one is later. The figure came with one accessory, the baton. The baton is a swagger stick carried as a symbol of authority. It could also be used to bludgeon the heads of cobra bats. The baton is small and very easy to lose. Most Sergeant Slaughter figures are missing the baton. Version 1, 2, and 4 all came with the baton. Yojo.com only lists one baton for all three figures. 
Are they all the same? Collectors have tried to determine if there are any differences in the accessories for the three figures. The only way to be sure is to look at sealed examples. Fortunately, I have sealed examples, sort of. We'll look at the batons and see if there are any differences later in this video. The figure is taller than the standard G.I. Joe figure. Even if you account for the extra height from the hat, the shoulders are still above those of an average figure. For example, Grunt here. Sergeant Slaughter stands about half a head taller than Grunt. The head is an excellent likeness of Sergeant Slaughter. He has brown hair. You can see a strap from the hat sculpted on the back of the head. He has a brown mustache and silver sunglasses. He has a brown campaign cover. The campaign cover, also known as the campaign hat, also known as the Smokey the Bear hat, is worn by U.S. Marine Corps drill instructors, which fits Sergeant Slaughter's fictional specialty. The hat has gold-painted rank insignia on the front. A real drill instructor would have a black eagle globe and anchor emblem on the hat. Moving on to the chest, it is a very muscular chest and back. He's wearing an olive drab green tank top shirt with a red, white, and blue USA on the front. He has a black whistle on his chest with a black cord that goes around his neck, and that cord detail does continue to the back. On his arms, he has bulging muscles. He has bare arms and red wristbands and black gloves. The waist is a base black plastic color with a white belt. He has a gold Marine Corps emblem belt buckle. On his legs, he has black trousers with G.I. Joe logos on the outside of the upper legs. He has tall green boots with black laces, black toes, heels, and soles. I think these are supposed to be stylized jungle boots. He has red and yellow rank insignia on the inside and outside of the boots. The rank insignia on the boots appear to be for an E6 staff sergeant, but it's missing the crossed rifles in the center. This contradicts the file card, which says Slaughter is an E7. There is a variation on these boots. Some of the figures have the center part of the rank insignia filled in with yellow instead of red. I do not have an example of that variation. Let's take a look at the file card. The file card was inserted in the sealed plastic bag along with the figure. It is red on the back. It has his faction as G.I. Joe, and there's a portrait of Sergeant Slaughter here. It has his code name as Sergeant Slaughter, and he is the drill instructor. His file name is Classified Top Secret. Remember, this is a fictional character. It's not based on the real Robert Remus. His primary military specialty is infantry slash drill instructor. Secondary military specialty is survival trainer. Place of birth is Paris Island, South Carolina, and his grade is E7. This Paris Island, South Carolina refers to the U.S. Marine Corps Recruit Depot, Paris Island, located at Port Royal, South Carolina. It's the recruit staging base for the Eastern Recruiting Region. His grade of E7 would be a gunnery sergeant in the Marine Corps. This contradicts the insignia on the figure. This paragraph says, just about every member of the G.I. Joe team is qualified to be a drill instructor so it takes a special brand of heavy-duty honcho to keep him squared away. Sergeant Slaughter fits the bill the way his bullet head fits his Smokey the Bear hat. Let's face it, the man be rough and he take no guff. Smokey the Bear hat is referring to his campaign hat. Smokey the Bear was a cartoon character created to raise awareness about the dangers of forest fires. He wore a campaign hat similar to the one worn by the Sarge. This paragraph says, they say he cut his teeth on a bogey wheel from a patent tank and that his first words were Semper Fi. They say that when the Sarge dresses down a boot in Camp Lejeune, the trainees cringe all the way to Pendleton. Most boots would rather dive for apples in the grease trap than cross the Sarge. They say he can blow a month's pay in one night in Thule, Greenland. Of course, jarheads are prone to exaggeration. We all know it's impossible to blow a month's pay in Thule, Greenland. Simperfi is short for Simper Fidelis, which is Latin for always faithful. It is the motto of the U.S. Marine Corps. Camp Lejeune refers to the Marine Corps training base located in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Pendleton refers to Camp Pendleton, which is a large Marine Corps base on the West Coast located in San Diego County, California. Thule, Greenland is a reference to Thule Air Base. It is the U.S. Air Force northernmost base. 
It's referenced here because it is remote, small, and not a place where a raucous marine will likely blow a month's pay. There are numerous references to the Marine Corps on this file card, but they're all part of the fictional persona of Sergeant Slaughter. In fact, Robert Remus was never a Marine. Sergeant Slaughter is only a role he plays. The real person was never in the service. Sergeant Slaughter was too popular a character to be only a mail-away offer. The same year the first version was released, 1986, a second version was issued at retail. This time it was a deluxe figure packaged with a small vehicle, the Triple T Tank. This version was released outside of the United States, but some countries changed it to fit their markets. For instance, the UK changed his name to Sergeant Slammer. They balked at the name Slaughter for a children's toy. Triple T is short for Tag Team Terminator, a wrestling reference. There were three releases of the Triple T in the vintage era. In 1986, the retail release included Sergeant Slaughter version 2. In 1988, there was an exclusive release recolored for the Night Force subset. It was renamed the Night Raider. It did not include an action figure. The Night Raider was primarily black, with bright orange accessories and glow-in-the-dark stickers. It was supposed to be recolored for night missions, but the bright orange pieces and the glowing stickers wouldn't work for that purpose. In 1991, the Triple T was available as a mail-away release. It did not include an action figure. The coloring was altered from the original. The white body was a brighter white. It had the orange pieces and the black engine cover from the Night Raider. The mail-away release could be ordered from catalogs that were included with G.I. Joe vehicles. The mail-away version was accompanied by a letter from Hawk explaining that the color change was due to a Cobra chemical attack. Thanks to 3djoes.com for allowing me to use their copy of that letter. Let's look at the boxed Triple T tank. My box is in pretty rough shape, but I don't normally collect boxes, so this is a bonus. The box art features Sergeant Slaughter driving the Triple T tank and Leatherneck, another Marine, riding along. It has a window pane so you can see the figure inside. Switching the box around to the back, there is a photo of the Triple T tank. This photo is of a prototype. It's very similar to the final released version, but there are some minor molding differences here and there. The Triple T and Sergeant Slaughter were worth three flag points, and his file card was printed on the back of the box. We'll take a closer look at that file card in a few minutes. Since this is an open box and it's all ripped up anyway, I will slide the cardboard insert out so you can see how this vehicle was packaged. The figure was sealed to a red backing that was glued to the cardboard insert. The two main body pieces are loose, but the rest of the parts are in sealed poly bags. You've got the treads, and then you've got the smaller parts here, and the sticker sheet. It also included a catalog, the Live the Adventure Assignment 1 Invade Cobra Island, and another catalog and the instruction sheets and blueprints. The Triple T has two missiles, two pivoting guns, and a removable engine cover. It rolls on wheels hidden under fake treads. The treads can ratchet up, but I'm not sure of the purpose for that feature. The underside is hollow, so the figure's feet stick out the bottom. This gives the impression that the Sarge is pushing the tank along with his feet, Flintstone style. The Triple T was underwhelming as a tank. It had no armor to protect the driver. Its armaments were minimal. Nonetheless, it was a moderately popular vehicle. It appeared with Sergeant Slaughter in the animated series a few times. Sergeant Slaughter version 2 included only one accessory, the baton. According to Yojo.com, it is the same as the baton for version 1. I don't have a loose baton for my version 2 Sergeant Slaughter. I only have the one that is with my sealed figure. Sort of. I noticed that my Mint in Bubble Sergeant Slaughter version 2 is not really sealed. There's a small opening at the seam where the plastic bubble meets the card. Through this opening, I can take out the baton without ripping the figure off the card. I can carefully remove that baton from the opening, and I now have a loose version 2 baton. Now that I have a freshly loose vintage 2 Sergeant Slaughter baton, let's see how it compares to the version 1 baton. This is 
is the baton I believe to be the correct version 1 accessory, and this is the version 2 accessory. They do appear to be the same, except there is a bit of paint overspray on the gold paint on my version 1 baton. Looking at the sculpt, design, and color of Sergeant Slaughter version 2, the top half of the figure uses the same mold as version 1. The bottom half of the figure is all new. Looking at the head, this is the same mold for the head and the hat as version 1, but the color on the hat is different. He still has the brown hair, the brown mustache, and the silver sunglasses. The campaign hat is an olive drab green with black rank insignia on the front. On the chest, he has the same muscular build as version 1, but now that tank top shirt is black, and the whistle and the cord around his neck are olive drab green. The arms feature the same bulging muscles as on version 1, but instead of red wristbands and black gloves, he has black wristbands and no gloves. The waist piece features a dark green belt. It is well detailed, but it does not have the Marine Corps emblem on the belt buckle. The base plastic color is an olive drab green, and there is a dark green camouflage pattern on that. The legs feature olive green trousers with that dark green camouflage pattern. There are some variations on that camouflage pattern, so you can find some variants of that. There are some molded seams on the outside upper legs, and he has tall black boots. These boots are not as tall as on version 1. Let's take a look at the file card for version 2. The file card for version 2 was printed on the back of the box for the Triple T tank, so there's just a plain cardboard backing. It has his faction as G.I. Joe. There's a portrait of Sergeant Slaughter here, taken from the artwork on the front of the box. His code name is still Sergeant Slaughter, and he is still the drill instructor. All the information in this top section is exactly the same as on the version 1 file card, but the text down here is all different. This section says, all the Joes are super tough, and they've been through the roughest, most grueling training to become the most skillful specialists in the world. It takes a master of drill training to weld stiff-necked, tenderfoot Americans into the most stout and honorable positions in the mobile strike force. That master and heavy-duty headman is none other than Sergeant Slaughter, the extremist in rough-and-tumble fun. This section says, Sergeant Slaughter thinks it's his personal mission to kick the butt of every boot in Pendleton. This guy can drill his trainees into the ground for 72 hours straight before he breaks a sweat. His favorite pastime is marching over the boys' backs while they do finger push-ups in the mud and spewing out brutal verbalities. He has been known to ride his tank through enemy fortresses rather than blow them up, just just because it's more fun. They say he eats nails and spits out dum dum bullets. Dum dum bullets are expanding bullets, such as soft point or hollow point bullets. They are prohibited for use in war by the Hague Convention of 1899. They say he cleans his teeth with barbed wire, brushes his hair with a rat tail file, and shaves with a blowtorch. Everything and everywhere is a battlefield to Sergeant Slaughter. This file card is good, but it has fewer real references than the first file card. This is Sergeant Slaughter version 3 from 1988. This is the most significant departure from version 1. It is an entirely different look for the Sarge. Even though the figure looks wildly different from version 1 and 2, it still reuses some parts. Like version 2, the 1988 version 3 was a vehicle driver. This time, Sergeant Slaughter came with a much bigger, much more realistic vehicle, the Warthog AIFV. AIFV stands for Amphibious Infantry Fighting Vehicle. It is a large, green, tracked vehicle. It is based on the real-world assault amphibious vehicle used by the U.S. Marine Corps. The Warthog has two yellow missiles mounted on a turret. The turret will rotate 360. 60 degrees. The missiles can be removed, and they are two-stage missiles, so they will split apart. The Warthog has three forward positions, each of which has a hatch. The front seat appears to be for a driver. There's a nice seat in there. And next to the starboard hatch, there is a machine gun, which will pivot. The body is dark green. On the front and around the sides, it has some vicious-looking teeth. It has two smoke grenade launchers. It has a removable engine cover with some engine detail. It has an antenna, and as with many G.I. Joe vehicles, the antenna is the most frequently missing part. On each side, there is an opening hatch. They open to reveal the troop-carrying compartment. 
and up to six action figures can ride along in there. As the name suggests, the Warthog is amphibious. It will float in water. The Warthog is an impressively realistic vehicle, considering it was released in an era when G.I. Joe was trending more towards science fiction. Let's look at the accessories for Sergeant Slaughter version 3. He came with only one accessory, but it was not a baton. This is the only vintage Sergeant Slaughter that did not include a baton. Instead, he had a removable hat. The hat is in a light green plastic. It has unpainted rank insignia on the front. It looks similar to the hat that was on version 1 and version 2, but it is slightly different. It's a different shape. They had to change it in order to make room inside the hat for the head. This is the only vintage version of Sergeant Slaughter to include a removable hat. Let's take a look at the sculpt design and color of Sergeant Slaughter version 3. The top half of the figure is entirely new, including the waist piece, but the legs at least partly reuse pieces from version 2. The outside of the upper legs and the lower legs appear to be the same as on version 2, but the inside of the upper legs appear to be a bit different, and the inside of the the left leg does not have the 1986 date stamp from version 2. Looking at his head, since he has a removable hat, he has an all new head. He has the same basic look as earlier versions. He has the prominent chin. He has the brown hair and mustache. He has the silver sunglasses. I have to say the hair is rather generous. The real Sergeant Slaughter didn't have quite so much hair at the time. Looking at his chest, he has a brown vest. He has a red shoulder pad on the right shoulder. He has a a silver bullet belt that goes over his left shoulder and that goes under his right arm and that detail continues around to the back. He has an unpainted knife on his chest. There's also a space here that looks like it should be painted flesh color but it is not. They skimped on the paint. His arms are bare and muscular. The upper arms are very similar to the upper arms on versions 1 and 2 but they are slightly different so I think they are new sculpts. He is wearing tan fingerless gloves. His waist piece is a base tan plastic color, and he has a light green belt with a belt buckle that has the Marine Corps emblem and USMC. On his legs, he has tan trousers, again, with the outside upper legs and the lower legs appearing to be the same as version 2. He has tall brown boots. Let's take a look at the file card for Sergeant Slaughter version 3. This card was printed on the box for the Warthog, so it's just a plain cardboard backing. It has his faction as G.I. Joe and a portrait of Sergeant Slaughter here. His codename is Sergeant Slaughter and he is the drill instructor. This information is slightly different from the first two file cards. It still has his file name as classified top secret. Then it has primary military specialty infantry slash drill instructor, secondary military specialty warthog AIF V driver. His birthplace is still Paris Island, South Carolina, and his grade is still E7 sergeant. This first paragraph is new. It says Sergeant Slaughter is the only GI Joe drill instructor with full authorization to drive the new amphibious assault machine the Warthog AIFV. Though all G.I. Joe personnel are capable of driving the vehicle, only the Sarge knows how to beat on it to get the most out of it. That's why he's the head D.I., because he knows exactly how to break in something new. The second paragraph is partly taken from the version 2 file card, right up to this point where it says, whenever he gets behind the wheel of the Warthog, he's like a raging bull in a china shop, tearing up everything in his path. He runs it through the gauntlet, hammering at it and crushing it into the ground as if it were another wet-behind-the-ears recruit. He's got to be that way, because no one is going to cut you a break on the battlefield. If it's not as tough as he is, he doesn't want it. This file card is all right, but I don't like it as much as the first two versions. This card focuses as much on the vehicle as it does on the Sarge. Looking now at version 4, the 1989 release is the only vintage version of Sergeant Slaughter to be released on a card. Version 4 was the leader of a sub-team of G.I. Joe, Slaughter's Marauders. The Marauders weren't the first sub-team led by Sergeant Slaughter. In the G.I. Joe animated movie, Sergeant Slaughter led a small team called the Renegades. 
The three Renegades characters, Mercer, Taurus, and Red Dog, were released as action figures in 1987. The Marauders were the second team led by the Sarge. Unlike the Renegades, the Marauders consisted of re-released action figures in alternate colors. The team included Barbecue, Footloose, Lowlight, Mutt, and Spirit. Slaughter's Marauders had a unified color scheme. They all had a camouflage pattern that included dark green, light green, and brown. That would not be so bad if they didn't also include light blue. The blue ruins the effect of the camouflage. Three Marauders vehicles were also released, the Armadillo, the Equalizer, and the Lynx. The vehicles were redesigned from earlier vehicles, featuring new weapon systems on old vehicles vehicle chassis. They all had a common camouflage pattern, which fortunately did not include the blue. Let's take a look at the carded figure. This is a rough example of a card, but the figure is still sealed on it with his baton. It has some artwork that wasn't featured on any previous versions of Sergeant Slaughter, at least none released in the U.S. I'm not crazy about this artwork. Besides being a little sloppy, it is inaccurate. It doesn't match the figure. First of all, the whistle is way too small, like comically undersized. Also, it has a Marine Corps emblem on the hat, but not on the belt. The figure is the reverse. The figure has the Marine Corps emblem on the belt, but not the hat. Flipping the card around to the back, we can see the cross cell. Uh, the figure was worth one flag point, and there is the file card. We will take a closer look at that later. This blurb says, Slaughter's Marauders lead G.I. Joe's latest land offensive against Cobra. Shielded by their camouflage and armed with the heaviest artillery, the Marauders are prepared to defeat Cobra anywhere in the world. Shielded by their camouflage, only if they can find a jungle with pale blue trees. Looking at the accessories for version 4, he came with only one, and of course it was the baton. Based on the batons that I've looked at for the other figures, it appears to be a lighter shade of brown. I'm not going to open this sealed example to take it out. I do have a loose baton that I've been using for my loose figure, but it does not quite match up. This appears to be a darker shade of brown than the one in the package. Looking at the sculpt, design, and color of version 4, it uses exactly the same mold as version 1. The date stamp even still says 1986, but now he is in Slaughter's Marauder's colors. Looking at his head, he has a dark green campaign hat. It is unpainted. He has blue sunglasses, and he has brown hair and brown mustache. The mold, of course, is identical to version 1, but the color change makes it a little less appealing. Looking at the chest, he has a muscular build. He has a blue tank top shirt, but the paint mask does not go all the way to the edge of the shirt, so it looks like he has a flesh-colored seam around the neck and arms. He has a black whistle on his chest and a black cord that goes around his neck. His arms are bare, and he has a muscular build. He has bands around his wrists, but those are unpainted. That's a very unfortunate unpainted detail. It looks like he has fleshy growths around his wrists. His waist features a dark green base plastic color and a black belt with a Marine Corps emblem on the belt buckle. His legs feature the Slaughter's Marauders camouflage pattern, which is a dark green with light green bands around the thighs and brown bands just above the boots, and he has tall black boots. Let's take a look at his file card. His file card has his faction as G.I. Joe. It has a portrait of Sergeant Slaughter here. His code name is Sergeant Slaughter. He's the Slaughter's Marauders commander. His file name is still classified top secret, but he has a new specialty. Primary military specialty is Commander Slaughter's Marauders. Secondary military specialty infantry drill instructor. Birthplace is still Paris Island, South Carolina, and he is still grade E7 sergeant. The text of the file card is all new. It is not copied from previous versions. This top section says, Sergeant Slaughter is G.I. Joe's premier drill instructor and special forces leader who has proved that no obstacle is too difficult to overcome. His gung-ho style and aggressive attitude have helped gain him the respect as G.I. Joe's toughest D.I. As commander of Slaughter's Marauders, G.I. Joe's newest task force, the Sarge has full authority to deploy the most powerful artillery to get the job done. When the Sarge is on the move, Cobra's on the run. This paragraph is a quote. It says, When Sergeant Slaughter yells jump, the men say how high. He commands the toughest, most disciplined out fit in G.I. Joe. The man is a master of getting the troops to do what needs to be done. You can see it in his success 
ratio, he has never lost a confrontation. That means something, especially when he's constantly slugging it out with the most diabolical combat machine in the world, Cobra. This file card is alright, but it's far from my favorite. It is short on real-world references. One thing I liked about the earlier file cards is it gave real references to the Marine Corps. Let's take a moment to talk about the baton. I asked my supporters on Patreon whether I should open these sealed examples to show you the batons. They voted to keep them sealed, so I've been showing you the batons inside the packaging. Hopefully that's a sufficient look at them. The one exception is for the version 2 figure, because I noticed the bubble had a tiny opening in the seam. I was able to pull the baton out through that small opening and show you that one up close. Besides the one I pulled out for version 2, I had two loose examples of the baton. One that was supposed to go with version 1, and another that was supposed to go with version 4. My loose version 1 baton has a sloppy gold paint application that is not the case with the sealed version. The sealed version has a very tight paint application, so these do not match for that reason. My authentic version 2 baton also has a tight paint application, so that does not match my loose version 1. My loose version 1 baton then is either an early release with some sloppy paint or it is not authentic. My loose version 4 baton also does not quite match up with version 2. Although the brown colors are very close, uh, there is some significant paint wear on this loose version 4. As noted earlier, I believe the version 4 baton is supposed to be in a lighter brown color as seen in the packaging. That means the baton I've been using for version 4 either belongs to an earlier version or it is not authentic. There are reproduction batons out there. If you want to avoid getting a fake one, you may think of subjecting it to the float test. Some some vintage G.I. Joe accessories will float in water, whereas reproduction accessories made with plastic resin will sink in water. It's important to note that only some genuine accessories will float. I subjected my confirmed genuine baton to the float test and it does not float. That means if you want to avoid a fake, you'll have to use a different method to authenticate it. Sergeant Slaughter was an enormously popular character, and his likeness was used on many G.I. Joe-related items, some licensed and some officially released by Hasbro. He was released as a micro-figure packaged with some carded figures in 1988. The micro-figures were later released as a mail-away offer in 1990. His face was on a command ring. The command rings were special free bonus items packaged with carded figures in 1990. Sergeant Slaughter's face was on the green infantry ring. Sergeant Slaughter was used as a model for a bubble bath bottle. By removing the Sarge's head, you could pour the fun bubble solution into your bathtub. Ben Cooper released a Sergeant Slaughter Halloween costume in 1986. There were many non-G.I. Joe Sergeant Slaughter items released, including wrestling action figures. Since he was a popular wrestler before his affiliation with G.I. Joe, his life likeness was on a ton of licensed product. Looking at how Sergeant Slaughter was used in G.I. Joe media, he appeared in only four issues of the G.I. Joe comic book series published by Marvel Comics. He first appeared in issue number 48. He showed up for duty at G.I. Joe's secret headquarters, The Pit. At the end of that issue, he knocked out Zartan, who was disguised as Gung Ho. In issue number 51, he participated in the pursuit of Zartan and the Dreadnoughts after they escaped the pit. He manned the main gun of the Havoc. He had a very brief cameo in issue 52, and an equally brief cameo in issue 53. And that was it. No more Sergeant Slaughter in the entire Marvel run. Even when the Warthog appeared in issue number 92, Sergeant Slaughter wasn't driving it. Even in issue number 82, which covered new recruits going through the training program, Sergeant Slaughter was not the drill instructor. In an interview with Toy Fair magazine in 1998, Larry Hama said he wasn't crazy about adding Sergeant Slaughter to the comic book. Sergeant Slaughter had his best appearances in the animated series. He was introduced in the miniseries Arise Serpentor Arise Part 1 when Cobra attacked G.I. Joe's headquarters with their new robotic troopers, the Bats. Sergeant Slaughter intervened. 
Lasers couldn't stop the bats, but Sergeant Slaughter's fists could. Later in the series, his DNA nearly became part of the genetic material that created the Cobra Emperor, Serpentor. He played a prominent role in the 1987 G.I. Joe animated movie. He was in charge of the Slaughterhouse, where he commanded his renegades, Mercer, Red Dog, and Taurus. After being busted for dereliction of duty, Lieutenant Falcon was sent to the slaughterhouse to be whipped into shape by the Sarge. Sergeant Slaughter transitioned to the Deke era of the animated series by appearing in the opening miniseries Operation Dragonfire. Slaughter and his marauders fought against Cobra's plot to gain control of a mystical energy source. In addition to his animated appearances, Sergeant Slaughter was in a series of TV commercials for the toys. He was in the commercial for his own action figure, of course. He was also in commercials for toys unrelated to his character. Sergeant Slaughter played the role of MC in the commercials for The Pulverizer, The Crusaders, and the 1990 lineup of G.I. Joe figures. Sergeant Slaughter became the public face of G.I. Joe in the late 80s and early 90s, and he seemed to relish that role. Looking at Sergeant Slaughter overall, I was never a wrestling fan. I only knew of Sergeant Slaughter through G.I. Joe. I was a fan of Sergeant Slaughter as a G.I. Joe character. Tough, strong, mean. He was everything a G.I. Joe drill instructor needed to be. Version 2 is my favorite version. I don't need the Triple T tank, but the figure is great. The black and the camouflage add depth to the figure. He looks less like a wrestler and more like a combat-ready troop. Instead of giving him the baton, I would have given him an assault rifle or a machine gun. The baton is a fine accessory, but too small and too easily lost. Because there are so many reproduction batons out there, the accessory has to be closely examined for authenticity. Hopefully, the close-up looks at sealed examples is helpful to collectors. My favorite Sergeant Slaughter vehicle is the Warthog, though it comes with my least favorite version of the figure. The Warthog is big, it's well-detailed, and it's mostly realistic. I could see Sergeant Slaughter driving this beast into battle. That was my review of Sergeant Slaughter. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks to Kevin from SEO Toy Review and 3djoes.com for the extra photos for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. I have a website, hcc788.com. I also have a Patreon if you'd like to support the channel in that way. Thanks to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon. The theme for 2021 is sub-teams. We'll be looking at a lot of G.I. Joe and Cobra sub-teams this year. You do not want to miss it. So, Sarge. How did I do? Did I slaughterize it? Not even close, maggot disease worm, disease maggot worm, disease maggot. Slaughterize it! Somehow I knew that's what you were going to say. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you next time. And until then, remember only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.